This is the Pune station of All India Radio. Tonight in our program Kaleidoscope, let's listen to boys as agents of change, a step towards a gender equitable world. An interview with Anjana Goswami and Sudakshana H from Equal Community Foundation. Interviewer is Gaurav Shimpi. Listeners, all of us have seen the struggles to achieve gender equality in our society. It is a struggle that has been going on for a long time and still continues, from abolishment of sati and child marriages to fight of equal pay. The shackles of inequality have been broken in many forms. There are, however, many more shackles to break and one such organization that is working towards equality is the Equal Community Foundation. So today we have with us Anjana Goswami and Sudakshina Aich from Equal Community Foundation. Welcome both of you. Uh, thank you Gaurav for inviting us. Let's start our program with how Equal Community Foundation was established. So ECF was founded uh, in 2009 okay. uh, by Will Muir and Rujita Tiri Desai. Okay. It was founded with a mission to raise every boy in India to be gender equitable. When our founders actually established this organization, one of the things that they did was to uh, research uh, different organizations who were working with men and boys okay. on gender equality. And then we found out that less than 5% at that time were actually working with men and boys, in fact not even boys, men. Okay. And um, that too just a one-time conversations and not going in depth on this issue at that point of time. So that's how our founders thought it's very very important to solve this puzzle of gender equality and to start including men and boys in this kind of a program. Wow, that's great. Gender equality has been approached as a problem by many activists and NGOs. So how does ECF differ from those approaches? Uh, because generally if you notice that for years and years organizations have been working with women and girls to empower them. Right. But unless and until you work with uh, men and boys, this empowerment is not actually going to be real. So uh, yeah, that is the puzzle we are trying to solve by engaging boys uh, at Equal Community Foundation. So I would say we wouldn't differ as such because we feel whatever efforts are happening in the field of gender equality okay. and with women and girls is much needed and it should continue. Right. However, yes, I mean, there are a lot of uh, different opinions and views and work by different activists and uh, not all might agree uh, to that form of uh, work that they are doing. But uh, I wouldn't get into that much. Right. Uh, coming back to what uh, we do differently at ECF is uh, we work directly with boys, we work with adolescent boys and we feel that uh, if we work with boys and raise them to be uh, gender equitable then they will create safe spaces for women and girls and in general all genders as well. That's great. Anjana and Sudakshina, how are you both associated with this program? Hi, thanks Gaurav for having us here again. So I look at the monitoring and evaluation of the core program which yes. is Action for Equality yes. for ECF. So uh, my story is a little uh, more interesting. I was really intrigued by the work of Equal Community Foundation okay. and I had heard about the organization from an ex-colleague of mine. Oh. So the first thing that came to my mind is, okay, working with gender and that too with boys, wow. So that right. was my yeah. first feeling. And I went through the website, I tried to connect with Equal Community Foundation yes. and hence the journey started wow, from so there. Wow, so you approached them? I yes. approached them in yeah. a way, yes. Great. Anjana? Yes, uh, so I think for me also I approached but uh, my story goes back to when I was 15 year old. So actually, uh, I mean and this could be every girl's and every woman's story. After I finished my 10th standard, I had to travel from the place I was uh, for colleges. Okay. And it was a train uh, travel, local train travel. And then from that day, and that is how I remember it, maybe it was there even before that. Yes. Uh, but the moment I stepped out of my house and until I come back to my house, till today I have a fear. Whenever I'm alone, I have a fear that, okay, somebody is following me, somebody is staring at me, oh. somebody is commenting on me and uh, whether I'm dressed properly, whether I'm having my dupatta and so on and so right. forth. 
and uh, I, I would say even today while I'm working at ECF and I'm an independent woman to uh, for say but I still have that fear when I'm alone so um, at that time uh, I used to discuss that with this with my friends and then we used to say okay well let's do a police complaint or let's let's not go in that uh, route okay. or uh, let's let's just um, you know avoid this ignore this let's let's not talk about it at that time I used to feel why is it that you know we are the ones who are facing violence and we are the ones who have to take the onus of not tolerating that violence okay. why should we not go in that in that same route where the boys are there or why should we check our clothes and what we are wearing yeah. and at that time I had this in mind maybe boys should be educated right. but I at that time I didn't know how and what and then years passed by I went on to do social work and then got into different organizations started working with women and girls which was uh, what I was passionate about uh, and then the other incident that just happened before I joined ECF was I was doing a session on domestic violence with women and we were like, uh, my colleague and me were talking about a lot about uh, how you should step up the house, FIR, how do you, you know, register FIR and uh, what all help you would get if, right. uh, if your husband is, say, uh, beating you, what do you do next? And after we finished that, uh, one of the women came to me and said that, okay, uh, Didi, whatever you said is absolutely right and we are happy that you did this session today. But tell me, if there is a violence at midnight, are you going to be there to support us? Right. Is the police going to really uh, treat us in a way that we want? And what kind of support are we going to really get? Because practically, right. we haven't seen this happening. Right. So, and then she said, instead of telling us, why can't you just get a group of our husbands and talk to them and say that don't beat? Yeah. That's wow. much more easier. Yes. So, then it really clicked me. Then I right. went back to my incidents. Right. And then I said, no, now I really need to get into an organization who work with men and boys yes. because that's much needed. And then I searched for organizations, applied at ECF. And after, I think, three, four months, I was called. So wow. I'm happy that I'm here today. Right. So you are the change makers who don't wait for change to happen. You are part of the change. So it's really great to know both of your stories. The words equality and community, they have so many resonations, connotations throughout our history. So in which aspects of these words are Equal Community Foundation uh, trying to work? So yes, it, it has a lot of connotation and it's very, very broad uh, in general. Uh, with Equal Community Foundation, one of the things is very clear is we are uh, looking at an equitable world to build a better uh, equitable world. So that's one aspect for sure. And uh, we want to work in um, in the communities with all the stakeholders for that, for that matter because we believe in creating an enabling environment. Right. Although our direct intervention is only with boys, uh, we've uh, ensured that we would work with parents, we would work with teachers, we would work with other stakeholders in great. the community. So that way we would like to involve all the communities. That's, that's great. So Anjana, you talked about educating adolescent boys in your programs. So why do you deal with adolescent boys in the beginning and why do you choose boys only from low income communities? So how do you think choosing boys from these communities affect gender equality in general? Right. So our core program is Action for Equality, wherein we uh, involve adolescent boys in the age group of 13 to 17 year old. So the reason why we work with adolescent boys is like we all know, adolescence is the age where there is a lot of changes happening, both physical and psychological, emotional. And this is also an age where boys tend, boys, girls or uh, any gender for that matter, tend to uh, come up, form their own opinions mm -hmm. and views. Uh, so we thought this would be a best age where uh, if we start to talk to them about human rights, about gender, sexuality, they would start to uh, critically think about this, question right. about this, and they would start to form their own opinions. Also, uh, these are the boys who grow up to, uh, they actually see their fathers as role models, their yes. brothers as role model. So we are trying to see how we could change that uh, aspect of it where they see probably our program mentors are as role models right 
and try to uh, them they themselves become more like a role model for the others in the community yes. so that's why we felt adolescents is the um, is a group that we need to start working with however we also know we uh, probably also start this program earlier than adolescents and we are working towards it nice. but for now our focus has been adolescents and right. we build evidence with adolescent boys uh secondly to answer your question about low income communities yes. here i would say one of our uh, main reasons have been the accessibility yes. because uh it's uh, it's easier for us to get into the low income communities they are more open to new ideas new suggestions coming in because there is that need or hunger of also knowing lot uh, right. being aware of a lot of things so that's one secondly uh, it's also uh, in terms of our population majority of our population uh, is there in the low income community yes. and it it needs to be addressed uh, in that manner and uh, thirdly we've seen that uh, whenever uh, we work in attitude and behavior change it's important to have that community support right. so the moment we work in low income communities we know they are like there to support each other yes. complement each other's work yes. so yeah these are some of the reasons why we chose wow, low income wow that's really great and how does equal community foundation approach these adolescent boys right so we have our facilitators whom we call program mentors going okay. to these communities and talking about these issues so one of their major responsibility uh, is to actually go uh, home to home talk about what we do oh. and uh, start enrolling boys Okay. So initially when we started we do know that unless we get into the zone of boys like they like cricket for that matter football okay. so our mentor would actually go to a playground right. play with them just say right. okay can i also play right. and play with them build that rapport okay. and once that connection is done okay now we have something interesting for you come to a community hall let's have some games let's discuss something new right so that's how we started but now we are in communities for a longer year so now there is that kind of uh, a program is known to a lot of people people have seen role models within the community yes. so now they say okay uh, because i see uh, you know ravi has gone to that program and i see a lot of changes right. in him let me send my son also right. and boys typically start coming because of the games activities yes. and the other thing is uh, they also see this as a safe space right. for them to talk anything very openly okay. because honestly if you ask me and because i have also worked with girls before at least for girls and women there is a platform to come and cry and you know share their emotions yes. with boys we see that there is no such platform right there is nothing that even whenever they want to talk about something it's always okay what rubbish this is not something you should be thinking about for example 14 year old boy would talk about his affair so he knows that if i have to talk about my affair outside i'm going to be judged yes. then i'm going to be taunted commented and i i probably i'll not be able to talk again but he knows that here we talk about it openly and i'm not going to be judged yes. because here we create that platform that you can show your emotions you can talk about anything and everything and we will direct you so here right. we are not going to tell you preach you don't do this don't do that no we are here to just help you think through right okay what is the responsibility that comes with affair yes. i mean how do you deal with that what is consent yes. how do you have a responsible behavior so we try to have those dialogues so they feel this is a safe space to come and talk and cry a lot of boys actually cry yes. as so and that is important for them yeah. also to express their views and feelings right what different programs does ecf offer to achieve its goals of equality okay so our mission is to raise every boy in india to be gender equitable yes. so to reach to our mission in a successful way and in a more sustainable way ecf has designed three basic programs or okay. three basic interventions one among that is action for equality which is our core program in pune so it is basically a gender transformative program that builds gender equitable uh, knowledge attitudes behaviors and skills in adolescents through three successive stages one is the foundation program the basic stage when the boys enter okay. then they move ahead to the action program and then right. finally they graduate okay. oh. after they graduate they are still engaged with ecf as a part of the alumni wow. program so there is a set curriculum that you have yes there is okay. a set curriculum for 15 weeks so we wow. have 15 different modules and okay. each week the boy comes to the community centers right. and 
they stay in the community centers for two hours. So typically our modules are from two to two and a half hours okay. and they give that time. After 15 weeks, they are said to be graduates of the program and then they are the alumni of the program. So okay. these terms are also very interesting to right. them. I find this interesting that it's not just a two hour workshop on gender sensitizing. Right. So you have a set curriculum of 15 weeks where a considerable amount of change we can expect from a person in those 15 weeks. So that is really great. And there are other projects as well along with this? Yes. So apart from Action for Equality, we have Project Race, which is uh, actually a program that aims to scale the approach of uh, raising every boy to be gender equitable. So through Project Race, we reach out to different states in India. This project is basically to deliver trainings and workshops to people from different strata and different professions. Okay. And that is a pan-India operation that we have. Okay. Along with that, we have our research development and evaluation part which basically looks at the monitoring and evaluation of the program and it builds evidence on uh, if and how the approach of uh, raising gender equitable boys work and it is like a complementary angle to the project race and action for equality program uh, and in the rde we also create monitoring and evaluation tools uh, and methods that can be uh, replicated by even other organizations. Wow. Anjana, I wanted to ask, how do you make your curriculum more interesting for the boys? We have a lot of games and activities because the whole curriculum is being uh, designed by keeping them in mind. In fact, a lot of consultations with them. Okay. So it was never just ECF coming up with one curriculum saying that, okay, this is what would work. It has always been, in fact, we were, uh, we are right now at ninth version of our curriculum. So we've been flexible enough to see what works, what doesn't work okay. and to be able to change it because ultimately uh, we need to see the impact. If we are not able to see that, then it's, there's no use of what we are doing. So we have done a lot of consultations with the boys, with the parents, the community members and our field staff to see what works, what doesn't. And now we have a robust proper curriculum in place. And this curriculum has different themes. We have human rights, we have gender, we have masculinities, we have sexuality, healthy relationships, uh, or just before that, violence. So we address all these themes in 15 weeks, like Sudakshana said, and each of our sessions typically last to one and a half hour to two hours. And in every module, we have something interesting for them. So when we, for example, we start with human rights, we just don't even say that, okay, today we are going to come and do human rights sessions. We just say, okay, we, we just do one energizer, ask them to sit in a circle and then give them papers and tell them, um, or chart papers and tell them to draw an imaginary country. Wow. So we tell them that close your eyes, imagine a country and then now we open and just draw. And now you say, think that you've gone to that country, what all you would require there. Oh. Don't think about India, don't think about any other, just think about your imaginary country. And then when they actually put down, then, right. then they would write, okay, we need water, we need food, right. we need space, we need to... But then we would connect it to the rights. Okay, these are rights. So instead of coming up with that theoretical constitutional rights, and of course we do that, but for them to connect, we first get into their personal reflections. Right. Because it's important that connect is there from personal uh, reflection and then they are able to actually understand. Yeah. So that's human rights. With gender, we would ask them, what does your mother do? Th their response would be, mother does nothing. What does your father do? Oh, he goes out and earns uh, living for us. Then we would say, okay, go home. Today, just see what your mother does and what your father does since morning till evening. Okay. Next time, come, uh, we'll talk about it. So instead of we telling, no, no, you're wrong, we actually tell them, observe, right, yes. come with your questions. Then next time when they come, they would actually say, oh, I said my mother does nothing, but I realized my mother is the one who wakes up at 5 a.m. in the morning, fills in the water, puts the bed, makes breakfast, right. and so on and so forth. Yes. Whereas my dad, uh, he wakes up, everything is ready-made for him. Right. Even his clothes are washed by my mom, his utensils are washed by my mom. And then finally when he comes back from work, he is again relaxing. He is either listening to a radio or going out his, with his friends. Right. And if, again he is getting, so my mother is the one who wakes up early, goes to the bed late. Right. So when they understand this, then we say, okay, how do you change this? What do you do differently? Then, he, then they come up with an answer, we need to share household responsibilities. So each one, even if we are responsible for, for our, our own things, yes. then um, my mother's burden would be reduced. 
so this is how we do we do a, we help them to talk we help them to question and the moment they understand that this is not a lecture mode yeah. this is not somebody telling me my teacher mm. is coming and my telling me do this do that at least i know what i want to do they are just telling us okay this is how it is now decide what you want to do yes and this actually helps the boys to that critical thinking and then understand okay at least i need to do my stuff properly so a boy who would come and throw his bag and just disappear and come at night at 10 pm would realize at least let me keep my bag properly um, you know shoes properly wash my clothes uh, if i'm eating I, i shouldn't just leave the plate and go out i should actually wash my plate so at least that kind of responsibility they start taking uh, up even in the four like third fourth session that we have so yeah likewise we have in all our modules we have something interesting for them right. and that helps in retention our boys yeah. would want to come that's really interesting and what effects have you seen in the participants of different programs like could you share some cases with us yeah so we uh, typically see a very sustainable progress uh, among all our participants in terms of their behavior in terms of their attitude the way they look at people around them that is also right. important so like anjana said there are some behavioral shift within 3 to 4 weeks of the program yes so uh, they become more responsible they tend to take their education really seriously in fact this is one testimonial we usually get from parents that earlier he would just come at home and um, not complete his homework on time and then just go about playing with his friends but now that uh, self uh, reflection or the self responsibility has come that at least i will do my homework uh, because i want to do something better in life right. then the way they talk to their parents so these are some immediate effects earlier they would argue and especially we are dealing with an age group who are um, really susceptible to arguments and yeah. answering back yes. but earlier they used to argue with them or not listen to them especially if the mother is saying something the boy would not listen to them thinking that uh, what does my mother know but now there has been a shift in the behavior there as well where they are more respectable the way they talk they are more res- uh, respectable they help uh, their parents quite a lot in their work yes. or as we say they share a lot of household chores yes. that is another big improvement that we see in their behaviors so typically like we know boys are not really encouraged to do a lot of household chores because they are uh, designated to be a woman's job and unfortunately even parents they do not encourage the boys to take up such chores yes. um, but we have seen a change within 4 uh, to 5 weeks of our program where boys go and talk to their parents or talk to their siblings okay. stating that if we all can live together in a house this is my work too okay. so let me do a particular chore slowly they move ahead uh, taking some more bigger level actions where we have seen many of the adolescent boy, boys talking to their uh, mothers and talking to their sisters about the menstrual taboos that is also a major change that we see Right. and it is really challenging for anybody especially if you are talking at home about menstrual taboos mm-hmm. and if a 14 year old is doing that he is usually shooed away but here the boys have been really talking to their uh, mothers and their sisters right. sometimes even grandmothers okay. some of them have been really successful in okay. in making them break these norms others are still in that uh, process right. then we have a few interesting stories from a few alumni that we have okay one of them is anand our alumnus who has stopped a child marriage uh, within his family not okay. once but twice and even as adults it's really important like i can talk for myself even if i have to i'm working in an, in in a social sector for long but going to the police regularly um you know involving child rights and especially if it is in my family it becomes yeah. a real difficult situation right. but anand could do that twice in fact he went to the village uh, involved the local police spoke to child line called them and with that help he stopped the marriage of one of his cousins who was actually a child and just to add yes. to that because we know him very well and this is something we actually talked to his parents and him after this has happened what we got to know is he didn't have any support there okay and except for his mother and him nobody really supported 
and um, at that age taking that kind of a risk of okay there let there be no support but i will not accept this violence wow. so the showing that non acceptance of violence and taking a stand for it even when there was no support right. is is a good thing and yes. we do have uh, boys like him doing this uh, we have uh, a yet another alumnus with us who's amul yes. uh, now he's of course uh, an adult he's pursuing his masters in psychology right. and he's also working side by side so he is trying to you know have a more safe and uh, an equitable workspace in his work area right. so he's mobilizing in that wow. um, in those areas as well yes. and you would also be happy to know that we have an alumnus shivraj who okay. is a part of ecf now in terms of employment he is an employee of wow. ecf now okay. and he looks after the alumni engagement completely so he'll typically go from one community to the other and children really look, look up to him that right. shivraj dada has come he right. is an alumnus yes. so we want to be like shivraj dada right. and adding to that again because uh, <laughs> i was there in that first cycle that shivraj joined right. when he was okay. 14 year old i actually met him oh. at that time okay and he was a typical boy like the others where um, he used to stand and you know stare at girls pass comments along with the other boys and uh, he he used to say that i am not touching her so it's not violence and when, but in our sessions we actually address the sexual violence we talk about how staring is a violence right. how commenting is violence even though if you're not touching because because of that her rights to education maybe her movement her mobility is going on so when he understood that this is what is happening he started having dialogue so initially he was a drop out then he used to come so there's been all that uh, right. journey with him it was not easy but once he starts to uh, started to understand and questioning now he is with us working and actually becoming a role model for the other boys so yes. again that like sudakshna mentioned it's it's a proud moment for us right. when this happens yeah. so we talked about project raise and uh, the other training programs for Uh, teachers students corporates and also parents uh, what is the content and duration of these trainings yes so uh, in terms of uh, themes we still have the same themes that is human rights gender sexuality masculinity violence and healthy relationship however uh, we also try to talk to the partners talk to uh, so if it is teachers talk to teachers authorities to find out what are the themes that are relevant for them how do they want to pick that up right. and then accordingly also in terms of the time what is what is it that they can devote to us so if it's like just 2 hours training we have done 2 hours also yes. if it's 4 hours we we know how to do 4 hours we uh, typically we do 12 hours we yes. recommend 12 hours okay. because we've seen that 4 uh, days 3 3 hours training online training i'm talking okay. about actually works better okay but whenever our uh, partners or teachers authorities have said that uh, we won't be able to give you 12 hours we will be able to give you 10 hours or 8 hours we've been able to do that okay. so our team is now equipped to be flexible enough with the content we can literally have bespoke training modules we know what to put where to put and then still make it interesting and the yeah. objective is still achieved yes so yes we are open to have it right from 2 hours to 16 hours yes sessions but the main program is of 15 weeks for for the boys, boys. Yes. yes and other than that are there any short term programs for boys as well so uh, with the boys as well if it's schools and the schools are willing to give us lesser time okay. then yes we we have shorter versions as well okay shorter workshops uh, yeah. yeah with community because we see that long term relationship building up and okay. we see that sustainable change okay. we continue to do 15 weeks but we have shorter versions for boys as well yes when we talk about equality so in a patriarchal society where men have certain benefits do you think ecf programs changes boys to take the right decision even if equality can affect their personal interests so like you said in a patriarchal setup men and boys do have certain privileges yes. however when we talk about equality and especially in the program that equal community foundation does we do not blame the men or we do not blame the boys right. we don't tell them that it is because of you that this that right. this is happening because we understand that they are in this structure from birth yes. and They're there is a condition to be that way yes yeah. and there is a certain socialization that they have faced yes. so what we try to do is we try to engage them as agents of change so wow. they are our main agents of change yes. it's not their problem so they may not be the uh, reason behind violence but they can be certainly the reason 
behind bringing equality into the world so many of our boys they don't see equality as a challenge to them because they also understand in the patriarchal set, set up even if they have uh, certain privileges they have certain drawbacks also right. like younger boys are taught not to cry boys don't cry and boys don't uh, play with dolls uh, i'm sorry i'll just talk about yes, one yes. more uh, yeah. story yeah. where we have this boy avinash okay. he wanted to take up beautician course in his school there was a oh. short 3 month course which they were doing okay. and his teachers and his parents all demotivated him that why will oh. you do this what is your future fortunately we have internet now at our disposal yes. so he showed them uh, various videos of uh, makeup artists who are male okay. and then finally he took that session as he said he was the only boy in that uh, course he took right. that session and when we heard from his mother she was really proud because he he did her makeup and he did her hair style on one of the festivals and right. everybody around told her oh wow your boy is doing so well yes. so we try to you know create that balance and to make them understand that you are also in that patriarchal setup Right. where equality will actually change your lives as well uh, also yes. just add to that uh, you're right when you say that why would they give up you know male right. privileges so one of the things that we realize is uh, like sudakshna mentioned there are benefits for them but the other thing is also the moment they start to understand and question things they realize that there are some things that i may not enjoy as in yes. you know challenging gender norm is obviously not something that they would want to but they do understand in the long run if if there needs to be a more balanced equitable world then i need to do this right. so that realizations comes i mean at an early stage yeah. and there's this perception that gender equality benefits women and girls but a lot of people don't realize that equality benefits men and boys too so could you elaborate on how ecf benefits the life of the boys who participate in this programs Yes it does impact in their lives also like Anjana was mentioning about peer pressure yes. that is something which most of us have faced and especially if you are a boy an adolescent boy they face quite yes. a lot so that is something they can come out of the peer pressures once they understand that i also have the right to say no right. if i don't want to ride a bike i will say no and i will not uh, get into the habit of uh, doing whatever my friends want also they understand that there are other aspects associated with it because they are not encouraged to question or they are not encouraged to share their feelings uh, like uh, how boys came and spoke about their affairs or how you know it is a safe space and they really trust the mentors right. so they look forward to the two hours when they can spend with the mentors and they can share their own stories right the step can seem so small but the impact of this steps can be so huge on our society that's really great now that we are coming to the end of our interview can we talk about the challenges and lessons you both learned through your journey in this ecf program one of the main challenge uh, which i think sudakshna mentioned earlier is uh, gender is not a priority whereas actually if you think through logically gender is there everywhere in every problem you choose there is gender you need to work i mean at the root of it it's gender so for us to actually pitch our work that way to help people understand that gender cuts across everywhere and it is important to address the root cause of it it takes time so right. that is one one thing secondly uh, creating that kind of enabling environment because wh while we are working with boys we do know unless and until we work with their sisters their parents uh, the other community stakeholders teachers we are not going to create an environment for them to actually go and change these norms so the moment they get that kind of a support they are it's easier for them to actually uh, show that transformation yes so that has been a challenge it takes time it it is very gradual because attitude and behavior change uh, even though we do 15 weeks there would be some boys who show change earlier mm -hmm. there would be some boys who would not show any change at all but maybe after 2 years you talk to him and he would still right. show that change yeah. but it will take its time everybody has their own pace to uh, deal with change yes. so that we've seen and thirdly funders buy in so because generally gender has not been a priority and uh, when it comes to uh, attitude and behavior change and this kind of a long intervention program 
although there is the evidence that it does bring about a change people feel that our numbers would still be low because it's easy to say thousands you know thousands and 10000s and lakh we have reached to yes. but we actually if I, if i can talk about until now we've uh, reached out to 6000 plus boys in pune okay now uh, for us it's still a good amount it's still a big number of boys that we've reached to yes. but when it comes to actual numbering funders looking at cost per beneficiary it is difficult to for us to convince them that this program works and you need to support us so although i i would say we've been really lucky and fortunate to have good funders in place with us but in terms of local funding getting more buy in from the corporates we still have to go a long way i will also talk about a particular challenge in terms of like anjana was mentioning numbers so when we talk about impact for us if a boy is focusing more on education or doing some smaller household chores that is also a kind yeah. of a change yeah. however um for outsiders outsiders in the sense for uh, funders or even for visitors they would say that this is not a very uh, feasible impact because what i can't see i can't actually see a proper impact going on yes. but that is something a challenge or a question that we always face yes. um but in our studies we have seen so we have had a longer impact evaluation study with about uh, 87 boys oh. whom we tracked through 3 years and we have actually noticed that the changes tend to come after maybe 6 months of the intervention and oh. as the boys mature there are more changes in their attitudes and behavior they okay. become more responsible and since you know they are older now so even in the community people would listen to them right. which they wouldn't when they were 11 12 13 year old yes. so that takes longer uh, you know there's a time span that we require for that right. it will be wonderful if you know others also understand that it takes a long time and slowly yeah. our boys are moving towards it other than that not really specific but i think we all faced a lot of challenges and hardships when um when we were hit by covid and right. in the lockdown so our entire program was shifted online and uh, many of our boys they don't have smartphones or even if they have you know one family will have one smartphone yes. and then there's an internet package that needs to be added on so there were a lot of challenges that the boys faced at that point of time yes. but fortunately none of them actually took that as a hardship or they did not leave it there yes. they took up that challenge they still were there in the program maybe they were sharing devices among two three people at yes. that point of time but they stuck to the program so that is also a wonderful great. takeaway for us great so i think it will be a great takeaway from this for our listeners that equality cannot be achieved in one day but it is a continuous process for each one of us and we are evolving through that to come to the conclusion what is the message that you like to give our listeners and if they want to get in touch with you for enrolling in one of your programs or if they want their kids to enroll in your program so how do they get in touch with you for the listeners i would like to say one is uh, gender is everywhere so let's not treat this as a stand alone thing and let's let's look at it as it needs to be there and we need to address uh, issues around this so the second thing uh, i would like to say is ecf uh, creates a lot of volunteering and internship opportunities so whoever is interested in knowing more about our work contributing in any way we are not just talking about the financial part of it but in any uh, manner whether they want to contribute uh, they can actually volunteer and uh, intern with us and um, the other thing i wanted to say is whoever i mean whether you are an employee or you are a college student or you are a homemaker whoever you are uh, and whatever your interest may be i would still say get in touch with us because we'll find something for you to work around uh, in fact if you are an employee in corporate and or a co- college student we would be happy to do trainings in your colleges or in your corporates so that is something you could connect us for a training okay. yeah lastly we would request you all to follow our social media links and increase our reach so that we can reach out to more and more people with this kind of a message and our email id is info that is i n f o at the rate ecf that is equal community foundation short form dot org dot in info at the rate ecf dot org dot in please write to us and we ensure that within 2 days time we'll get back to you if you want to get in touch with us and uh, know more about equal community foundation's work please look up ecf equal community foundation on linkedin twitter youtube 
and Facebook and Instagram. We are on all the social media platforms where you can reach out to us. That's great, Anjana. Sudakshina, it was great talking to you both. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank, thank you, you, Gaurav, for inviting us. And I hope we get questions, feedback and email from our listeners. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. You are listening to an interview with Anjana Goswami and Sudakshana H from Equal Community Foundation. Do tune in next Wednesday. Until then, thanks for listening and stay tuned as our next program follows. Thank you.